Shalom Bethel family. It's time for our weekly review of our Torah discussion. This past week was Parshat Ki Tete, and I delivered remarks called Beware of Piety. And there's some texts uh, in the email that you can connect to uh, in order to follow along if you'd like. Um, but I start off telling a story. Uh, I, some of you know I often do a lot of writing at Cafe Stella, a uh, wonderful little cafe near the synagogue. And I was writing there last week. Uh, it was nighttime. I don't usually write at night, but this time of year, just before the holidays, you know. So, uh, and, and someone came and they saw me, uh, someone who knew me, and they said, oh, Rabbi, and they asked me whatever they had to ask me. And, uh, and that was fine. They left. But I was sitting at a communal table, and that sort of outed me as rabbi to the people I was sitting with. And so this guy, who I'd been sitting next to for about an hour, all of a sudden kind of uh, says to me, oh, so you're a rabbi? Yes. You know, I, I grew up really Jewish. We kept a kosher home and all, but I don't keep kosher anymore. Um... Okay, <laughs> this is a conversation that you'd be surprised how often I have. And until recently, I didn't know what to do with it. I'll be someone, they'll find out I'm a rabbi, and then they immediately disclose some perceived lapse in their own Jewish journey, like we had just entered a confessional booth or something. Oh, you're a rabbi? I used to keep kosher, or I used to attend shul, or, or keep Shabbat strictly. Now, I know for a fact that other occupations are not like this. You know, I grew up, my dad's a pharmacist. When he tells people, hey, I'm a pharmacist, no one ever says, really, you're a pharmacist? You know, I never really followed the directions on the medicine bottle. Or, uh, you know, you never hear someone tell a lawyer, oh, you're a lawyer? I've been, I've been sued a few times. Or, oh, it's nice to meet you, officer. You know, I used to drive inside the speed limit, but now I get pulled over all the time for speeding. It's the most bizarre thing. When I was a newly minted rabbi, I, I didn't know how to deal with this. I'd meet someone, they'd make their impromptu confession, and I'd want to say, it's all right, say 10 Hail Miriams and you'll be absolved. But now I have a serious answer. When someone approaches me with one of these confessions, I ask one of a few questions. Well, are you honest in your business dealings? Or... Really? Well, do you work to make the world better for the next generation? Or maybe, uh, oh, okay, but do you believe in things in this world that are greater than yourself? Or do, do you seek wisdom regularly and learn from those who disagree with you? After that, they're the ones giving me the odd looks. But I tell them, first be able to answer those correctly, and then you can worry about coming to synagogue or keeping kosher or whatever it is you think you're supposed to be doing to be a good Jew. That's what I think is going on in these dialogues. I've realized that when people come and say to me, oh, you're a rabbi, whatever comes next really means, you know, I'm not sure I've been a very good Jew. And what I'm responding with is a passage from the Talmud that I included in your Shabbat booklets or on the, the text handout that uh, you can download, or at least my interpretation of this text from the Talmud. These questions are six questions that you are asked when you reach the gates of heaven for judgment. According to one rabbi, Rava, you are asked those six questions. You may notice that they all deal with how we approach our everyday lives and the values we live by. Not one of them says, how many times a month or year do you attend synagogue? Or did you keep kosher or Shabbat strictly? They ask, were you honest? Did you live with integrity? Did you recognize a greater purpose? Did you seek to better yourself? Did you prepare the world for the next generation? The point is, if you are a good person in this way, you are well on your way to being a good Jew. It's not a measure of how you live your Jewish life. It's a measure of how you live your whole life. That's why this part of the Torah, Ki Tetze, goes through dozens and dozens of civil laws. 
What does God care if I help my neighbor with his overburdened donkey, or if I shoo away the mother bird before taking the eggs, uh, or, or if my house has a parapet, right, a, a fence around the roof so that nobody falls off? Those don't seem to be religious questions, but they are, in fact, the most central religious questions. Living a value-driven, purpose-driven life is a prerequisite for living a good Jewish life, not the, only, not the other way around. If you're a crook, but you come to synagogue every week and you keep strictly kosher, if you are so pious in your religious Jewish practice, do you know what that makes you? It makes you a pious crook, but you're still a crook. We need to beware of piety and remember that to be a good Jew, first, you have to be a good person. Wait, so now you might be thinking, great, today the rabbi told me I don't need to come to synagogue to be a good Jew or keep kosher or practice at all. Why should I make Shabbat special by lighting Shabbat candles or uh, doing life cycle rituals? So, I, so no, I'm not saying you don't have to do those things. I'm just saying maybe we need to change the reason why we do it. Right? These things are not only beautiful rituals and practices that connect us to God. They also remind us what those values are that they should infuse in the rest of our lives. Keeping Shabbat reminds us that we have the power to control our time and make it sacred. Kashrut and blessings before we eat remind us that we are not entitled to our food, but are blessed with it from God. Coming to synagogue reminds us that there is a wisdom greater than our own, and that it is our responsibility to continue to challenge the assumptions that guide our lives. The beauty of Judaism is not what happens when we are doing Jewish, per se. It is doing Jewish that inspires the rest of our lives. Now we are in the month of Elul, Rosh Hashanah is quickly approaching, and as we prepare ourselves for the high holidays, this is important to remember. If, as we review our year, we are asking ourselves only about the Jewish stuff, we are not really doing our reflection properly. The questions we should be asking ourselves as we prepare our souls to meet our Maker on the high holidays, to stand before God in judgment, are those basic ones that Rava asks in the Talmud about honesty and wisdom and recognizing things greater than ourselves and preparing for the next generation. Those are not Jewish values. Those are just values. And those are what we should be reviewing as we approach this high holiday season. It's not easy. It requires a lot of discipline. It requires a lot of self-honesty. But I pray and I hope that we all have the ability to do that, to challenge ourselves on those basic questions so that not only can we seek forgiveness for this past year, but we can also look to the year ahead with purpose, with integrity, and with the real understanding that will allow us to make it better than the year that has passed. With that, I wish you a Shavuot Tov, a very good week, and a Shana Tovah.